date. Am I wrong for ending a 20 year marriage because I learned my wife cheated on me while we were dating? Original post. My wife, 44 female, and I, 43 male, have been married for 20 years. We started dating in high school when I was a junior and she was a senior. We were long distance for her first two years of college, while I was in high school and did one year at community college. Then we went to college in the same city for a year and have lived together since. We got married the summer after I graduated college. Our marriage has been pretty great so far, but I initiated a divorce after I discovered that she was sleeping with multiple other men for the two years we were long distance. Just after Christmas, we got together with a few friends of hers from college to catch up, have dinner and hang out. We talked about a lot of stuff, and my wife mentioned that we met in high school. Not that we dated, just that we met. Her old college roommate commented that it was crazy that we met in high school, had a few wild years in college, then ended up together. I played along and commented that I didn't know if my wife was as crazy as I was. The roommate started to tell a story, but my wife cut her off and said she was uncomfortable about it. I sensed something was up, so I said that we actually started dating in high school and we were together for my wife's entire time at college. All of my wife's friends got really quiet, and the rest of the dinner was awkward. On the way out, one of her other roommates took me aside and said I should have an honest conversation about what happened at college. I asked my wife on the way home and she kind of blew me off. I told her it was important that she was honest with me, and again she said it wasn't important. When we got home, I told her I was going to stay at my brother's house until she was ready to talk about what happened in college. The next day, she came over and admitted to sleeping with several men during her first two years at college. She said she didn't consider it a big deal at the time, because we were long distance, and she didn't think high school romance would last. I pressed for more details, and she said it was at least 10 different men, including at least three guys she introduced to me as friends when I came to visit on weekends, and one guy she was still in contact with. I told her that I wanted a divorce, and would be starting the paperwork as soon as I could, which I did on January 2nd. Her family and most of my family is telling me I shouldn't throw away my marriage over a few mistakes. I've stood by myself that cheating on me with multiple men for years is unacceptable, no matter when it happened. And the fact that she continued to maintain relationships with these guys right in front of me was an unacceptable amount of disrespect. We have two children, but they are 17 and 19, and I believe they will understand why I need to end a marriage. Am I wrong for leaving? I feel like I'm going crazy with the amount of people telling me to overlook years of infidelity and decades of lies. Now for the top comments before reading the update. 10 guys can no longer be described as few mistakes. Also, note that she said at least 10 different men. So first of all, the number could easily be 15. Second, the different means that she has slept with some of them or most of them multiple times. Some of the guys she probably let OP shake hands with were regular F buddies, and she let her boyfriend hang out with them and went to get plowed when he went home from the visit. She cheated and lied to them, maintained contact with at least one of her buddies and introduced you to many of the guys that were banging her. That is not only dishonest, but cruel. I think you are 100% in the right. Who knows what else she's done? You have no way of knowing. Yeah, that's the part that stuck with me most as well. My marriage ended primarily due to my ex cheating on me. The part that hurt most was that it was with her coworker, someone she made quick friends with and someone who was trying to be friends with me too. We had him and his wife over to hang out and just him over on multiple occasions. Cheating sucks either way, but to be so brazen about it by waving your affair partner in front of your partner's face is something else. Certainly made me feel like a tool. I wish you the best, OP. Don't let anyone tell you it's not so bad because it was a long time ago. She chose to keep it a secret and would have continued doing so. I guess she didn't feel that guilty about it. That's not someone you can trust. This makes me recoil, the sure cruelty of it. How do people cheat? How do people do this? A psychological torture to the one person who loves you more than anything and became your family. They're utterly selfish, driven by lust, and have no regard for anyone but themselves. That's how. Edit, I'm glad I did this with a throwaway because the response here is unexpected. I obviously can't answer every question slash comment, but I wanted to provide some detail for common questions. The reason I posted this is that my wife and a few friends have been saying it's common to sleep with other folks when you're in a long-distance relationship and that I'm kind of the odd one for not sleeping around. I felt like I was being gaslit, but I wanted an outside perspective. We live in a state with a waiting period to finalize a divorce, so I felt it was a reasonable idea to get some insight before things are finalized. After these comments, as a handful of folks saying it's normal to sleep around during a long-distance relationship, 
but it seems to be a significant minority. We saw each other a couple of weekends a month during the two-year college period. I lived about three hours away from our college, so it was long distance but not like cross-country. This was not a situation where we went months without seeing each other. The three guys I met while she was in college were meetups that happened during parties. The subject of me being a boyfriend didn't really come up, so I honestly don't know if these guys knew anything. The one guy we're still in contact with married a mutual friend from college. This is not some guy she secretly messages on his side, it's somebody we've talked to regularly for years. I've talked to him a few times since I've learned about my wife. He said he didn't know we were dating at a time, and has since blocked my wife on social media. Some folks have asked how the roommates didn't realize at our wedding that the timelines didn't work out. The main reason is that my wife and I had a very small ceremony with just close family in Texas, then went back to the East Coast to have a big party with friends. The typical reception slash sharing details about how we met stuff didn't really happen, so her roommates didn't realize we started dating before college. It sounds like they thought we only dated for the year we were both in the same city, then moved in together. I was open to therapy or some kind of attempt to save the marriage, but her insistence that this whole thing is common and I'm the one who's out of line is just too much for me. The only time she showed any remorse or even offered to reconcile is when I started filing paperwork. In the last week, she's gone back to saying she's right and I'm overreacting. This is also why I feel like I'm being gaslit. It seems obvious that this is a major issue, but I've got my wife and others telling me it's normal and I'm overreacting. I'm not getting a paternity test unless my kids want to get one. I don't have any doubts that they are biologically mine, and no test will make them not my kids. I love them more than anything in the world, and my wife's infidelity won't change that, even if one or both of them is not biologically mine. They've been my kids for 19 years, and they will be my kids until I stop breathing. Final Edit Hey all, I've been reading a bunch of the responses, but things are getting crazy and increasingly unhinged, so I probably won't be checking in more. Here are a few more answers to common questions I've seen. We were definitely exclusively dating at the time. First, dating culture was a lot different 20-ish years ago, and exclusive was kind of the default for most people. Second, we had a long and difficult discussion before she left for college about continuing the relationship long distance. She specifically wanted to stay together, and even joked about her dad coming after me if I started sleeping around with girls at my school. Finally, at my senior prom, she was not able to attend and was very upset when I proposed going with a platonic female friend of mine. As a result, I ended up skipping my prom and hanging out with her instead. While we never said a word exclusive, I think the above reasons, combined with a general relationship before she left, are enough to assume exclusivity. Based on some comments here, I followed up with a friend that said I should have an honest conversation. She told me that 10 guys would be on a low end, and that her biggest concern was that there was apparently at least one pregnancy scare that I didn't know about. I honestly don't think that really changes much. It's less about the number for me, and more about the fact that she seems incapable of recognizing why this was wrong or why I feel betrayed. Thank you all for the helpful responses, even those that disagree with me. I will still be open to therapy if she's willing, but I honestly feel like it would be more about us being successful parents and finding closure than saving our marriage. Now, 40 updates a month later. My wife and I are seeing a couple's counselor and have been to three sessions now. Based on what my original post outlined and what we've talked about in counseling, I'm still moving forward with the divorce. I believe that counseling was the right move, and I appreciate folks for recommending it. I don't think it's going to save our marriage, but it has helped me communicate my feelings, helps my wife understand where I'm coming from, and most importantly, helped us to be in a position to work together as co-parents. First, let's talk about the things I learned about the situation in college. After talking to my wife in sessions and texting with two of her roommates, it's clear that her roommates knew something was up in college. They said they thought the situation was weird and likely involved cheating. My wife had told them that we both had some wild times in college and worked it out before we got married, so they never really brought it up. The roommate who pulled me aside recently was uncomfortable with the fact that my wife clearly didn't talk it through with me and wanted me to know. As far as being introduced to the guys she slept with, apparently that was not intended. For one of the guys, he ended up dating and then marrying one of our mutual friends from college. This is the guy she was in contact with. In the other situations, she initially blamed me in the counseling session, but has now agreed it was bad. When I went to visit her, she planned to hang out in the room or just hang out together alone, but I wanted to go to a few parties. Because in high school and community college, I didn't really have parties to go. She didn't expect me to meet the guys, but they were at the parties and she felt she didn't really have a choice. 
I still think this is kind of crappy, but it's not as bad as her intentionally parading me in front of the guys. Most of our discussion in therapy has been talking about why I think it's a big deal and she doesn't. She initially said that none of these guys were in relationships with her, and it was mostly one-night stands or friends with benefits. Since she didn't view them as romantic relationships, she didn't see the big deal. Her words, not mine. My opinion is that we never said that was okay, and she actively prevented me from doing the same. After digging into this across two sessions, and my wife talking to some friends, she now agrees that it was a breach of our trust slash relationship. This is the shared understanding that has helped us talk about this situation more honestly and helped us get from arguing to talking, which is why I'm optimistic about co-parenting. Now, here's why I'm 100% set on divorce. Two things came up that make me want to leave the marriage. First, about 10 years ago, we went through a really rough patch and had a dead bedroom for about two years. She had expressed that our intimate life was becoming boring, so I tried to spice things up. Apparently, she had been hung up some sexual experiences that happened in college that she is not comfortable talking about and wanted me to try them. But when I did, it made her feel awkward and guilty that it made her think of other men while she was with me. The fact that she's saying these experiences were meaningless, but they're still impacting our marriage, tells me they meant more than she wants to say. Second, she admitted that she has been flirting with co-workers on business trips since the pandemic ended. She says she has never slept with anybody, but it got as far as going on a date with one of her male co-workers. That was the absolute deal-breaker for me. We have told our children that we're getting a divorce. We told them it was due to some bad decisions that we made in college that we're having trouble moving past. My 19-year-old who is in college asked me if I cheated on my wife while she was away at college. My wife got a little shaken up but admitted to the kids that she's the one who cheated. We have agreed to not share any additional details with the kids. I reinforced that both of us will be there for the kids and that we are in therapy to help make sure we handle this in the best way for the family. I also told the kids that if they wanted to talk to either of us or a therapist about it, that I would fully support it. We have started talking to a mediator about how to proceed with the divorce. And unless things change, we should be able to have an amicable divorce. We're both financially stable in our own. We have no major debts and our kids are older, so custody isn't a major issue. This has been a crappy couple of months for me, but I'm doing okay now. And I honestly am grateful that my last post blew up because it both validated some of my feelings but also motivated me to go to counseling with my wife. Edit. A couple of things to add in response to comments. I know she probably cheated more than she has admitted. Once our dead bedroom situation from years ago and a date with a coworker came up, I accepted that this has probably been going on at some level for our whole marriage. I'm not glossing over that because I'm an idiot who believes she's telling the whole truth. I have enough truth to know this is the right decision and that it was more than just college. Adding more detail won't change anything. In this post, the last post and in a lot of messages, people keep asking if a whole pass would help fix things. It won't. I don't believe that more cheating will solve the trust issues. That may have worked for other people, but I really don't think that's going to help us. My soon-to-be ex and our counselor know about the Reddit posts. I was upfront with both of them about it. I've kept this anonymous enough that I doubt anybody would guess who I really am, and this has helped me process things. In all honesty, seeing both sides of the issue has helped me, and reading the comments on the last post helps my wife better understand some of the frustrations and hurt I feel. I don't necessarily believe sharing all these details in Reddit is the healthiest way to handle a situation, but I don't have many close friends I can share with who aren't also mutual friends with my wife, so this is kind of a way to talk through it. Has she even apologized for everything she put you through? Especially the part where she went on a date with some a-hole? Before our counseling and at the first appointment, she was not apologetic. At the second appointment, the focus was for me to explain the effect it had on me. She has expressed remorse and apologized repeatedly since that session. It's too little too late, but she's not some kind of emotionless monster. Was a slapper always a slapper. She as well have been cheating the entire marriage. She just ain't owning it, as she knows she couldn't gaslight that way. The fact that the kid automatically asked if he was the one cheating, that would insult the heck out of me. As well, rid of that toxic tart. To be fair, my 19-year-old daughter had some issues with crappy boyfriends, who have either cheated or dumped her suddenly to be with somebody else. I'm also the one who left the house. Given her experience with men and the fact that I'm the one who left the house, it makes sense that would be her first thought. When cheating came up, my wife made it clear that she was the one who cheated. To be honest, I'm not really too concerned about the narrative here. From what I can tell, she hasn't said anything bad about me to our kids. 
In addition, given her admission of recent flirting slash cheating and the fact that she is ready to file a joint amicable divorce after six weeks and three counseling sessions, I think she was ready to move on before I was. It makes the logistics of the divorce easier, but it hurts a bit to realize she's having an easier time walking away from a 20-year marriage than I am. Sorry that it came to this, Hopi. Good luck moving forward. Don't be. He's already wasted 20 years. This is for the best. Sucks that it took 20 years, though. Clearly, his wife cheated physically and emotionally over the years and kept it all from OP. That would eat me alive inside, even if I kept it to myself. 20 whole years based on deceit and manipulation. Keeping a cheating partner in her life. Makes me wonder if the guy's wife even knows about their intimate past, because most partners wouldn't keep a past whole partner in their lives. Especially one that a friend knew had a history of cheating. Pretty clear they never told her because the guy blocked OP's wife immediately. Not only did she cheat back then, but then in therapy admitted to going on a date with a guy and flirting with work dudes. That's messed up. I'm so sorry, brother. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not coming to terms with the fact that my wife cheated on me 14 years ago before our marriage? I, 35 male, am married to my wife, 37 female, for 11 years and together for 14. We have a beautiful 7-year-old daughter. And our marriage has been great without any major problems until last year. Last year, I learned that my wife cheated on me before our marriage. One of her friends became religious and confessed her actions to me, which had me confront my wife. She was shocked that I learned it and apologized profusely about her actions. However, she said it's not something important now because we have been going strong and have a family together. She told me I should come to terms with it, since it happened four months into being exclusive and she was a stupid girl out of college back then. My mind told me the same. It happened 14 years ago and we were happy right now. So I decided to forgive her and continue our usual life. Reality was not that great though. My mental state took a big hit. I realized it's not something that happened 14 years ago for me. That cheating happened for me when my wife confirmed it. I was less confident could not be intimate with my wife. Just could not get it up for her. This turned into feeling disgusted being around her. I even took a DNA and STD test secretly. Thankfully, our daughter is mine and I am clear of STD. Then a year of intense individual therapy started for me. I realized I needed to change somehow. I was not the same person I used to be. I also communicated my feelings to my wife and after pushing a bit, we started going couples counseling too. However, at the end of everything, I decided to proceed with divorce. Here are my reasonings. She not only cheated back then, but lied to me for 14 years. She did not confess the action herself. Even though she apologized, she dismissed the facts by saying it's not important anymore. Young me was robbed of having a choice. Cheating was, and still is, one of the biggest deal breakers for me. If I knew it back then, I would have broke it off. I am happy with my life, and I am glad that our daughter came to the world. She's the light that shines the brightest for me. One of the biggest reasons I keep living. But I still was robbed of a choice back then. Individual and marriage counseling could not fix our problems and my feelings towards her. It also started affecting family life, which could affect our daughter. I think our daughter would be better off having us as co-parents, instead of living in a broken family environment where consistent arguments are present. Sex life is basically dead for me. We do have sex but I feel like those women on film slash series that just lay and look at a ceiling waiting for it to be over. The only difference is that I'm a man. I do not even want non sexual gestures anymore. Last week, I had a sit down with my wife and explained everything I wrote here in detail. My feelings, reasonings, and some other private things. I've been talking to a lawyer for the last month and papers are almost finalized. 50-50 custody, 50-50 assets sharing and as amicable as possible. I explained everything thoroughly and clearly to her. She freaked out and had a panic attack. We spent the night at an ER. She's begging me to reconsider and not throw away 14 years. However, even though I would like to stay, it will result in us being roommates and a broken family environment for our daughter. Am I in the wrong here? Now for the top comments. This isn't an a-hole or not question. You aren't able to love her the way you did before. You no longer trust her. Your relationship is dysfunctional. Therapy didn't help. Calling you or her an a-hole will solve absolutely nothing. All you can do now is to make the separation as smooth as possible for your daughter. Someone else wrote this in a thread months ago and I still remember it. 
The affair happened 14 years ago for you. It just happened for me. Like she's had 14 years to process and lie about it, and then to just let it go. For Opie, this just happened. He's still dealing with all of it. And not just the affair, but the 14 years of flying by emission too. It's brand new to him. Also Opie, not the a-hole. Also, the wife is an a-hole. Not the a-hole, and I'll tell you why. Even though she apologized, she dismissed the fact by saying it's not important anymore. The only thing that infuriates me more than cheating is someone being dismissive of their cheating because it happened so long ago. It's not old news for you. For you, it just happened because you just found out. Now, even if your wife had been truly apologetic and contrite, I would say you weren't the a-hole for not being able to let this go. But the fact that she tried to sweep it under the rug and pretend like it doesn't matter? Huge red flag. Plus, you clearly can't look at her the same way. Get out. It's a shame you couldn't have found out earlier, but at least you know now. End the marriage. It's best for both you and your child. Opie tried to make things work, but it's clear his feelings for his wife have fundamentally changed. We can control our action, but not our emotions. Insisting on a loveless marriage can make things even worse. It's more about the 14 years of lying than the cheating. You're still young. Honest love is still waiting for you. Yep, the whole it happened so long ago argument doesn't wash. All that does is make me think about every moment, every smile, every look, and how they could have been actively deceiving me about something like this the whole time. If they're capable of lying about something that big, how do I know they're not hiding other things? Frankly, I would probably be less disgusted if my partner came to me and confessed an indiscretion that happened the previous night. I couldn't forgive it either way, but at least they weren't so shameless as to lie about it for over a decade. Don't blame OP in the least.